Hello, my name is Felipe Banks, and I'm with student and fellow athlete, Sarion Bellamy. How y'all doing? And the man who does it all, production for Albany State, Mr. Eric Tabor. Greetings to everyone. And this is ASU Sports Talk, episode four. So, first we would like to acknowledge our following Ram who passed away last Monday. Adonis A.D. Butler, who was our sophomore linebacker who came from Stockbridge, Georgia. We want to send our love and condolences to his family and friends and anybody he impacted. Anybody want to say anything about it? Well, uh, I'll say a big shout out to his mother was at the game Saturday uh, and she celebrated with the team and, and FYI for everyone, she's going to be attending all of Albany State's games going forward for the remainder of this season. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. And uh, this past Saturday, we had us go to Rams. We was, what, 9-1 now? 9-1. and one. Okay, nine so one. we're 9-1, and one, still undefeated in the SIEC, and we played against Fort Valley Wildcats, our our rivalry for, sure, I don't know how long. <laughs> What's the beginning of school? I would just say over a decade. Don's been long. Oh, yeah, been way longer than that. Probably over 50 years. Over 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. So we had played them against, uh, well, at the Coliseum in Columbus, uh, yeah, in Columbus, Georgia. It was the 31st Final City Classic, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And um, during this game, we had basically honored AD this game by shutting out the Wildcats and putting exactly 57, uh, 57 points, which so happens to be his uh, jersey number. Um, also, just a side note, if you take the rest of the number after the game ended, if you take the rest of the numbers on the school board and add them together, they also came out to be 57. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is a very big, big coincidence. Or maybe just, you know, him being the extra man that he always been. Yeah. So, for, the, uh, for that game, we would like to highlight the players who was the MVP of the whole game, Deontay Bonu. Yeah. And he had, oh, what was, it, what was it, five touchdowns? I believe, no, nah, well, I think so. And he had uh, 107 yards, I know that for a fact. Cam Ward had 103 yards rushing, and Joe Shorter had 62 yards. Uh, the highlight players of uh, Fort Valley were Jalen Joyner, with 80 yards, MVP, Emmanuel Wilson running back with 108 yards, and Aaron Price with 40 yards. So they tried, you know, they put a little, a couple of good large here and there. I mean, but Emmanuel Hudson, despite uh, everything going on, they, he was, they ran the air out of him. So <laughs> he was their bell cow, and no matter what the situation was, they were going to stick to that run game, and I'm pretty sure he got well over 20 carries easily. And, you know, he's a, he's a hard runner, so. You know, if nothing else, even though they might get blown out, they'll, they'll stick to the run game and they'll go to their number one guy or their best player on the field, which is him. Besides number seventeen, their receiver, which is supposed, which um he's supposed he's supposed to get drafted and he's been hurt lately with the knee injury. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Cause he was on the sidelines at the other yeah, game. Yeah, I think he Gets tore. I, I think he tore his ACL. I'm pretty sure. And well, I don't think he tore, but Dr. Tabor was telling me that he could have played when they played Savannah. Um, in Fort Valley for their senior day, but and he was upset because he didn't get a chance to play. But his coach was saying, "We don't want to risk anything because you might because you might have a chance to get picked picked up late, you know." So right, he right. just he's, he's actually projected to be a fifth round draft pick um, in the NFL draft this spring. Oh wow! So you know his coach didn't want to jeopardize his yeah. future earning potential. Yeah, mm -hmm. trying to play on senior night. Yeah, and I know that's upsetting. Because, you know, you see your team losing by a lot, and you're like, well, if I could just play, I could get in there and help, but... Nah. <laughs> it's hard. Nah, you got to look out for your future, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but when you're, when you're that age, you don't think about 10 years from now. You're just thinking about what can I do tomorrow. That's about as far as you kind of get. Right, right. So, uh, I think that's it for Fort Valley, right? Those are the last game of the season? That yeah. wraps them up. Yeah, that was it. Dang, that's a tough loss right there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, our next opponent, because our season hasn't ended yet, 
uh, we are going against Miles. Miles College, the Golden Bears versus the Golden Rams. So, uh, Miles had continued their win streak this past Saturday while we were playing our game against Tuskegee, and they beat them by 52 to 23. With their triple threat of quarterback Claude uh, Noel, he had 20. 225 passing yards. Dante Edwards had 114 yards and two touchdowns. Chris, Christopher Brown had 94 rec- receiving yards. Uh, with help from the defense, Kadarius Roberts with one sack, um, one QB wor- hurry, and uh, one forced fumble. So they were doing a thing uh, last Saturday uh, as well, picking up plus 50 points. Um, the Golden Rams didn't receive any notoriety, surprisingly, from SIEC Players of the Week. And all of the rewards went straight to Miles players, even though we put up 57 points and shot out the whole team. Because well, <laughs> I think I think it's one of those things where they're depending on us to be predictable, where we have this thing where whoever we play in the SIEC championship, we usually beat on them during the regular season. And then... For some or for some odd reason, we end up losing to them in the SIC in the SIC championship. So I think that's that might be one of the reasons why too. But I think this year might be a little different because we're more dynamic as an offense. Because you know, even in 2019 or a few years ago, all we did was mostly run. But now we have that threat of being able to pass pass the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things where we don't have to sit there and try to rush for. 200 to 250 yards we can pass just as much as we run exactly but still though like we shout out the whole team for 57 points <laughs> we should get something if, if, well, some, if somebody ain't hating they ain't doing your job well the defense is gonna get donuts for getting the shit out today yeah donuts yeah okay yeah. cool crispy cream cool. right yeah that, that's nice and all but you know yeah, crispy because duncan anytime nasty the defense gets a shut out they get donuts yeah crispy cream because yeah yes. oh, that's yeah. a nice little cheat duncan though, nasty bro crispy cream is where it's at <laughs> duncan, it, i agree i know that duncan donuts i can't really say nothing about it shameless plug for crispy cream <laughs> and if you hear this uh uh we would love to for you to be a sponsor of the show and we actually do consume a lot of Krispy Kreme here. Yeah, yeah, very much. More than we should, Kreme. probably. <laughs> so if you want to drop off some samples, yeah. you're always welcome to. Yeah. Specifically, you know, the regular glaze, you know. <laughs> nah, give me a chocolate cake one. A chocolate cake glaze, that's pretty good, too. Another shameless plug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, apparently, I did not realize this, even though I helped film the game two years ago, but in 2019, we had went against Miles College uh, and we was beat. So hopefully this time we beat them. Cause man, we, we can't take another loss from Miles College. Like he's not back back in the championship game. That made it seem like we can't do our job. <laughs> I think it'll be different just cause like I said earlier, we can pass the ball. You know, when we played them in 2019, Miles was keying in on our signals. And I don't know why, but we did not Change the scheme up in halftime. We were running the same run plays that we were, and I'm pretty sure any 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 coach with the brain or player can read and understand signals, especially if they're the same more or less, or if you or if you see how things are supposed to play out from the other side of the field. Because it would be one of those things where whenever we didn't run the ball and we tried to play fake, they were so confident that we could not throw the ball that. Is they didn't they didn't have to drop so far back in their zones. They would sit there, play around a little bit, and mm-hmm. wherever the ball went, they knew the ball wasn't going over the twenty over uh, twenty yards. So they sat there <laughs> in, the, in their zones in their flats and just you know waited for the ball to come out. Mm-hmm. But now we got a we got a passing threat, so they got to go out. They got to go out there deep. Yeah, they got to. If not, then shoot, we just gonna keep on throwing it, get a touchdown, yeah. throwing it, get a if touchdown. If we pass the ball. <laughs> If we pass the ball against Fort Valley uh, and we do that against Miles, we should definitely win the game. Mm-hmm. Hope it don't watch too much tape, though. <laughs> yeah. They do. Um, every coach, that's what they did this past weekend after that game ended. They celebrate that Saturday. Um, but after about midnight, 1 a.m., 
it's time to get ready for the next opponent. So they've already broken down film on them and yeah. can come up with a game plan pretty much. Probably talking about doubling uh, Joe Shorter since I think he's uh, he's our leading receiver this year, you know, best receiver this year. Yeah. Pretty, pretty sure he has over five touchdowns. Yeah, so, nah, he going to get it this time. Yeah, so well, the thing about Albany State football, it's uh, – it's football by committee. Um, defensively, everyone that has dressed has played in, I think. At least two games. What? At least four. Yeah. Um, also, offensively, it's uh, backfield by committee. It's plug in a running back, and all of them seem to be just steamrolling our opponents. So that's a big up to the Albany State University offensive line. Um, I've watched them grow and develop, and they have done a fantastic job this season in run blocking and, and almost as good a job in pass protection. Yeah. Mm. Shoot, congrats, man. Cause we couldn't done without you. <laughs> Definitely could have done without you. And the I'll throw this in. The latest HBCU Box to Row uh, football media poll just came out, and Albany State is ranked number five. Well, we didn't make much of a jump, though. Yeah, yeah. we moved from six to five. Yeah, that's uh, not Norfolk, much of a jump. Norfolk State got upset uh, this Saturday, which dropped them down. But Bowie State is still ahead of us, and they're also ranked number two in the regional ranking polls that came out uh, November 1st. What about mm-hmm. Prairie View? Uh, Prairie View is Division One. They don't count, but Prairie View is not ranked. Well, I'm sorry, they're ranked number two okay. in the Box Row Media Poll. I should have said that because I, I voted them number two. <laughs> yeah, that's a say not on that list, right? Cause they D one. No, they are. Yeah, they're D one, but this is just HBCUs. What are they number one? Now Jackson State is number one. Okay, yeah, I, I predicted that. Uh, Jackson State number one, Prairie View A and M number two, Florida A and M number three, Bowie State number four, Albany State number five. Florida A and M has had a good has had a good year this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Fayetteville State six, Norfolk State seven. South Carolina State, eight, Tennessee State, nine, and Savannah State enters at number 10. Um, they just made the cut. Yeah. Mm, okay, they ain't that bad. They ain't, they ain't that bad. Well, um, are, are we streaming this game? Not streaming this game? Um, no, this game will be on ESPN. Uh, Tiffany, That's an uh, ESPN's main anchors for HBCU, Tiffany, mm-hmm. and... Uh, um, Mr. Walker, uh, and I, their names escape me, but they will be on more than likely on the call for Saturday's game. Oh, okay. Just because it's an away game. Well, no, it's uh, ESPN. Is, uh, that game might be on one of the linear channels. Yeah. Um, so, yes, they, uh, so they're bringing in their main HBCU announced crew for that game. It's my understanding right now. Okay, cool. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and end this episode. And um, anything, well, as far as football, I know for sure. Um, I created, well, I edited the highlights of all the home games that were filmed for uh, Albany State. So you can find it on Peach State College Sports website. Well, Peach, yeah, PeachStateCollegeSports.com. And all you got to do is just search up Albany State, and you'll see my name, Felipe Banks. I edited them. You'll see the pregame shows uh, that me and Serian do. Uh, he's the host. I'm the editor and shooter. <laughs> and me, me and Mr. Tabor, we just put together the highlights and I edit them put together. And we all do this podcast. So all that can be found on, again, PeachStateCollegeSports.com. Yeah, Tiffany Green will be on the call more than likely. Okay. Um, for that game. Uh, big up. She's... Uh, Tampa, Florida native. Hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, that'll be in this episode. Anything else you want to say? Last words before we come back in, what, two more weeks? Because we ain't got nothing next week. Well, it's going to be an interesting week. we got uh, possibly women's basketball Saturday and, I mean, Friday and Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I'm not 100% certain, but it's supposed to be the uh, CIAA SIAC crossover. Uh, exhibition or games where we're going to have two SIAC schools and two uh, CIAA schools and, and it's supposed to be played here at Albany at uh, the Hyper Complex on the Jones Brothers court. Mm. 
Okay. Cool. Well, be on the lookout for that. More likely, uh, possibility. Uh, we will be talking about that. See what we're looking forward to for the next season. Uh, I'm gonna be graduating this this December, so. But they probably still going to hook you up with the games, as far as like live streaming and stuff like that next semester. But um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> See y'all next week.